Oftentimes, we hear about how God became a man, performed miracles, was crucified, rose again, and usually the story ends there. But what happened after Jesus' ascension? Well, today we're going to talk about that. Hey, I'm Bailey. I'm Michael. And I'm David. Today, we're going to be talking about what happened after Jesus rose again. Hallelujah. Yes, son. Um, The short answer to what happened after Jesus rose again is read the rest of the New Testament. Uh, The book of Acts talks about what happened with the apostles immediately following Christ's ascension. And many of the other books are teachings from the earliest Christians, but that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, In previous episodes, I've alluded to the fact that many of the early Christians died for their beliefs. Michael says that people are willing to die for anything, but I believe that the way some of these people died shows that they honored and believed that Jesus really rose from the dead, and that their deaths can therefore bolster the resurrection argument so today i'm going to explain the details of some of those stories and then later i'll discuss the impact of christianity on society as a whole though before i begin for our listeners at home i want to let you know that these stories are quite gruesome so viewers discretion is advised also or listeners discretion technically depends on how you're consuming this Take media me to the semantics the home EV, but... all right anyway also uh some of these martyrs have strong documentation on their deaths while others have less reliable sources as we will see moving forward so let's begin with some that are documented in the bible uh there are the first christian martyrs that are documented in the bible such as john the baptist John the Baptist was Jesus' forerunner who fulfilled an Old Testament prophecy by preparing people for the Messiah's arrival. He wasn't on King Herod's good side because he told the king that it wasn't lawful for him to take Herodias, Philip's wife, as his own. He was then thrown in prison and the king married Herodias anyway. The king wanted John the Baptist killed but feared an uprising. But according to Matthew and Mark, Herodias' daughter danced for the king King Herod at a banquet on his birthday, and this pleased him. King Herod offered to give Herodias' daughter whatever she asked for, up to half of his kingdom. Herodias then encouraged her daughter to plead for the head of John the Baptist, and since it came from a guest, the king wanted to honor the request. So John the Baptist was beheaded while in prison. This is documented in Matthew 14, 1 to 12, and Mark 6, 14 to 19. And then the other one is Stephen, a Hellenistic Jew who began following Jesus. He was the first Christian martyr. He defended his faith in front of the rabbinic court, which angered the Jewish people, so they had him stoned to death. His last words were a prayer for forgiveness on those who condemned him. And this is documented in Acts 7. And I don't know if you guys have any thoughts, but those simp. are the ones. What a simp. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, your daughter does. The the daughter did a nice dance for me. So what? Take up to half my kingdom. It, yeah, that's basically what happened. Off with his head? Like, Pretty much. Like, like how high key horny do you have to be? Yeah. Just to get a dance, be like, yeah, yeah, take everything. Ooh. Go to horny jail. Basically. You know, if only we had that. We need that sometimes. Yeah. All right, well, uh, the bulk of this episode is going to be um, a recounting what happened to the apostles. Uh, fun fact, the word apostle means one who is sent out. 
Um, so, starting with Simon Peter, he was the disciple that walked on water and denied Jesus three times. Jesus once told him, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew sixteen eighteen. Also, fun fact, the name Peter means rock, so Jesus was making a pun when he said that. Also, Catholics use this verse as evidence for the papacy and refer to Peter as the first pope. Now, after Jesus' ascent, Peter became one of the first Christian leaders and led the apostles. He was also imprisoned by King Herod. Jesus prophesied Peter's death in John 21, verse 18, when he said, quote, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. End quote. Under Emperor Nero, Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to die like Jesus. This is the one uh, that Michael references with his happy necklace um, that we, we mentioned in uh, your interview episode. Yeah. Yep. It's not satanic, you fucking morons. <laughs> yeah. So... It's pretty pr- pretty Christian. Yeah, actually. Basically, oh, originally. Originally. Oh, until, oh, gee, before all the edgy kids started all the, misrepresenting it. Yeah, all they had to do was flip it upside down. This could be a side episode one day, uh, but I feel like everything like that's quote-unquote satanic is really just knockoff Christianity. Like, they just take... Like, the, the pentagram is just an upside-down Star of David. The upside-down cross is just... A mockery of the cross and a lot of like modern day Satanism is really just like Christianity without God basically so morals yeah I feel like yeah. we've touched on that before <laughs> yeah alright well anyway we'll go to the next one uh, Andrew who was Simon Peter's brother he was a disciple of John the Baptist, the first disciple to follow Jesus, and the first to claim he was the Messiah. He's the one who found the boy with the five loaves and two fish when Jesus fed the 5,000. Andrew also didn't feel worthy of dying like Jesus and was bound, as opposed to being nailed, and crucified on an X-shaped cross. The X-shaped cross then became known as the St. Andrew's Cross. And by the way, this might get a little grindy because we got a lot of apostles to go through. But this is this is the episode where we talk about how a bunch of people died. Yeah. So I mean, it's probably going to be a little bit of a downer. But death, <laughs> death, death. Welcome to the episode we talk about death. Well, if, not just death, but people dying. We've talked. We can talk about like yeah, what happened. Existential. If yeah. any of our viewers, this watched... isn't existential. This is just yeah. People died. Yeah. If any of our viewers watch Japanese wrestling, you'll know what this is. Death. Wow. Imagine me in a clown outfit. Yeah, I was building this PC last night. I finally saw that, and I wish I got my thirty seconds back. Ah, oh, fuck you. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You have to fill me in later. James the Greater, or James the Elder. That doesn't mean he was better, it just means he was older or taller than the brother of James. That's just kind of how they referred to him back then. Um, He was one of Jesus' earlier followers and was one of the closest apostles to Jesus, alongside his brother John and Peter. Him and John were nicknamed Sons of Thunder by Jesus, presumably due to their zealous speech or fiery temper. He was, one, he was the first apostle to be martyred, and the only apostle martyr documented in the Bible. According to Acts 12, verses 1 to 2, quote, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. End quote. King Herod wanted to win favor of the Jews by attacking Christians. John the Apostle, a.k.a. John the Divine. He was the youngest of the apostles. His pen name was the one whom Jesus loved, presumably. And if that is the case, that the one whom Jesus loved is John the Apostle, he also wrote the Gospel of John and most likely Revelation. He's the longest living apostle 
apostle and possibly the only one to not be martyred. According to Tertullian, an early church theologian and the father of Latin theology, John miraculously survived being thrown in a vat of boiling oil. John was exiled to the island of Patmos, where he wrote the book of Revelation. It is unknown exactly how he died, although it is believed he died of old age. That's one of the ones we don't have, like, the greatest um, documentation because on how he, he died. Lived. Yeah. Pretty much. Probably. It's not... I mean, it's, there there is some... Some sources say he was murder, martyred this way, and you'll find that with a lot of them. Some of them, like... See, like, the way we determine this is that there's, if there's a lot of sources saying the same thing, that's probably more than likely what happened. But when you have a bunch of independent sources saying different things, you don't really know what happened. Um, so we're, so, so we're, that's the case with kind of... Surviving a vat of hot oil. <sighs> Some conservatives will hate that. I'll say it's fake news. Anyway, um, let's move on to Philip. What a name, Philip. Philip. You know, screwdriver. If you had solo after it, an okay rapper. Or just Philip. Philly. Philip. Phil Swift. Philip Philly Swift. Phil. Swift. Philadelphia. Okay. Anyway, not much is documented about him in the New Testament, though he likely belonged to a group influenced by John the Baptist and was killed, or, oops, uh, was involved with feeding other 5,000. He died by crucifixion and, according to some accounts, was killed upside down. He wanted his body wrapped in papyrus because he didn't feel worthy of being wrapped in linen like Jesus was. So I guess that's kind of a theme across um, some of the martyrs not wanting to die exactly the way he did. Well, because it's seen as disrespectful, which... Yeah. Whereas all these other people are like, oh, when I die... I, I want, want to be the crucified. Fabrics. Oh. I want my coffin to be gold. Gold. Well, it's like the people that go like coffin shopping. It's like just those put, are weirdos. Just put me in a like. Don't even put me in a box. Just toss me in the dirt. You think about death too much if you go shopping for your own casket. Or you're too vain and you want your <laughs> the last memory of you to be in like a pimped out golden. Kiss memorabilia. <laughs> Kiss memorabilia <laughs> casket. No, I mean, when some a Gene pe- Simmons song popping out of the great. No, I mean, some people do it for like just fiscal responsibility, make sure their funeral is paid before. True, but, yeah. But a lot of people just want. I, I, I wouldn't be caught dead in this. Yeah. See, I, I like. I think we should just allow people like, when you're dead, you get a certificate that says you can bury the body wherever the fuck you want to. <laughs> Oh, my front yard? Dope! Ooh. You know, they used to do that back in the day. Yeah. Was, yeah. So you just take the fucking body and put it in there. Well, I mean, it was convenient. Put it back to where it came it from. It was a matter of convenience. Yeah. It's like, now now we got so many rituals and they got to st- keep them fresh. It's becoming a problem because those dead bodies don't decompose like yeah. regular dead bodies. Well, back to the, the martyrs. Subject. Yeah. Murdering mm-hmm. holy men. Bartholomew. 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 Wow. The agnostic got me. Oof. Like Philip, little is known about him from the New Testament, as he is only mentioned in the list of the apostles' names. Oof. Uh, He was the founder of the Arminian Church and probably died the most gruesome death of the apostles. One report Mm -hmm. says he was flayed alive and then beheaded, while another says he was knocked unconscious and then drowned in the ocean. I think one of those is way more gruesome than the other. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, drowning I, sucks. I mean, they're pretty. Uh, yeah, but still, they're like. But if you're not I mean, unconscious, look, you're gonna drown, and you won't know you're drowning. You know, like, but if you're flayed, you're fucking flayed alive to death. Let's like have a, a a wheel of fortune here of like which apostle death is most preferable. Would you rather be flayed alive, crucified upside down, uh, knocked out, and then thrown to the ocean? Thrown to a vat of oil. Uh, there's more, but we I haven't gotten wait, there yet. There's <laughs> more. Wait, I get to be knocked out before you fucking drown me? Yeah, knock me the fuck out. Fuck all that up. Well, what shit. if you wake up while you're drowning? They, and they then, did a shitty job knocking me out. I want a refund. 
<laughs> I want to redo this execution. Da, 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 da. It, it's kind of like with modern day death it, penalty. They give they you can get a sedative before the state murders you. Oh, bro. Or you know when they got rid of the one medicine, it just used fentanyl and like a barbiturate. No hydromorphone. Oh, hydromorphone. Yeah, dude, that sounds like a fucking great way to die. Now, uh, at least like Missouri is thinking about using inert gas. Which, I mean, uh, assisted suicide is the same thing, so... Quite well, compared simple. to how these guys died, our prisoners have it fucking easy. Oh, yeah. Whether you're pro or anti, you know, I mean, death penalty, maybe, that's maybe, beside the point. Maybe they after got they, it easy compared after to After he worked the King's and got rid of the gas chamber. Yeah. And Bush did 9-11. Please stop. <laughs> Back to the topic! Yeah. Michael may or may not have been joking. We'll leave that up for you to decide. And if you think he wasn't joking, you should harass him on Twitter at the Devil and God. You should bully him and the president on actually, Twitter. <laughs> actually, Kermit the Frog did 9-11. Okay. Back to the martyrs. <laughs> How does this always happen? <clears throat> Thomas, a.k.a. Doubting Thomas, because he refused to believe Jesus rose again until he touched his scars. And then Jesus appeared and allowed him to do just that. He spread the gospel in India, which, by the way, each of the apostles were tasked with missionary work. He was martyred by an impaled, by being impaled with a spear, possibly by a Hindu. Matthew. Oh, such a peaceful religion, they say. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's, I've been learning more and more about uh, oh, a I couple know. of uh, the Hindu things. I've, I've been pretty ignorant on Hinduism, but. Gandhi beat his wife. Don't forget. I think he was a pedophile. And a pedophile. Don't forget it. Oh. Yeah. He's not the only religious leader that's a pedophile. Uh-huh. Anyway. Catholics? <laughs> Most <laughs> religious leaders. <laughs> we'll get to that in oh, the next episode. I'm actually going to I'm gonna talk about Later, other need, religions. Need what do you know? I know some up things. thing going with the Dalai Lama. Who's that? Uh, I think... Think boot, if I remember correctly, Buddhist. But in short, I'll tell you later. Basically, when he dies and there's a new Dalai Lama, mm-hmm. there's a lot of political tension with that. Of course, it, it includes the government of China. Well, of course. But back to the topic at hand. Okay, Matthew, hmm. aka Levi. Also, side note: apparently, I was also named. Apparently, supposed to be named Levi. But then I got the woman's name. Like mean, Bailey is kind of a gender neutral <laughs> name. Yeah, person. well, I've it's known also one a, female it's a Bailey very, and one dude Bailey. It's a very common. Uh, Which one you want to be? You decide. It's a very common dog name. So when I'm like, when people hear my name for the first time, they're like, "Oh, my dog's name Bailey." I'm like, "Cool, thanks." And one of us was supposed to be Skylar, and the other was supposed to be Stormy. You got you guys. Yeah. Mama Mia. One of us was supposed to be a boy and the other was supposed to be a girl. I just wasn't showing my pecker because I was like, no, man, these weird doctors, pedophiles. Wow. What do you know? Yeah, man. Not much has changed. I mean, I was, <laughs> I'm actually a little more. If you want to see my wiener, you can see it. No. All right. We're going to talk about uh, Jesus. I mean, Matthew. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A.K.A. Levi. Uh, he was originally a tax collector when Jesus called him to follow him. Because his job required him to document tax information, some believe he was also a scribe, the author of the Gospel of Matthew, and possibly wrote it himself, since he may have been a scribe. He ministered in Ethiopia and likely died there. It is unknown exactly how he was killed. Reports say he was beheaded, stoned, burned, stabbed, or died of natural causes. Though... The report that he died of natural causes came much later. All the early accounts agree that he was martyred. They just disagree on the exact details of how he was martyred. James the Younger. Ha! Ah, little James! Little Jamie James! He was the brother of Jesus who didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah until he had been resurrected. He's the author of the book of James... He evangelized either in Jerusalem or Egypt. The evidence is unclear. The account of him being in Jerusalem says he was thrown from the top of a temple, stoned, and then beaten to death for refusing to deny Jesus. 
while the one saying he was in Egypt says he was crucified in the city of Ostrakine. So they just fucking yeeted him. Yeah. Yeet. I want that yep. by tre- Trebuchet. What? You like a catapult? Oh. But better. Oh. But right. better. Well, he, said, he said he was yeeted. So okay. That, that's immediately where my mind goes. Okay. Well, I'm going to... I'm just going to go on to Jude before we get on a tangent and talk about something completely unrelated like we always hey, do. Jude. Jude, who is not to be confused with Judas. Yeah, fuck Judas. He's mo- he most likely took the nickname Thaddeus to avoid being associated with Judas. Like Thaddeus with that Thaddeus. This theory that he, he was uh, nicknamed Ju- uh, Thaddeus... Derived is derived from the list of apostles in Matthew and Mark, which named Thaddeus instead of, as an apostle instead of Jude. He's possibly the author of the book of Jude and likely a brother of Jesus. He became a healer after Jesus' ascension and evangelized in Syria. According to one source, Jude was murdered with an axe by angry religious leaders. Simon is... The, a lesser known apostle but he was known for being a very loving man towards his fellow apostles he is believed to have preached in Egypt and Persia he was either martyred by being sawed in half or died peacefully at Edessa you know what Simon is known for pattern recognition wow I so, get it yeah that's I understand. terrible You gotta, you gotta come up with like better <laughs> things to interrupt me with. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be more funny. Yeah, not funny. Just have interesting, whatever. Judas, you know Judas. Oh, fuck Judas. He's the one who betrayed Jesus for thirty pieces of silver what by a... reporting him to the Roman authorities. So he's a he's an informant, basically. Yeah. Fucking snitch. Uh, fun fact: the name Judas means betrayal. Well, ironic. He felt so guilty for his actions that he tried to have the chief priests take his money back, and when they didn't, he committed suicide. According to Matthew, Judas hanged himself, but Luke reports in Acts that he fell and caused his bowels to gush out. (laughs) (laughs) Sir, it's a fucking snitch, right? So, Sepoku. So out the beheading. So basically, uh, skeptics are skeptics are going to say that this is a contradiction in the Gospels. Like one says he died this way, another says he died that way. This can actually be easily remedied by pointing out that Matthew is reporting how Judas died by hanging himself, and Acts is reporting what happened to the happened days later to Judas's body after he died. It fell and caused his guts to spill. I mean, that sounds about right for decomposition but fuck Judas yeah I'll feel bad for no snitch yeah well now you know how Judas died good he's technically an apostle but you know the worst one yeah and then there is Matthias Matthias means gift of God he was not one of the original apostles chosen by Jesus but was appointed by the apostles after Jesus' ascent to replace Judas little was known about him from the New Testament he was believed to have preached in Judea, then Ethiopia, which is modern-day Georgia. According to the Apocrypha, Acts of Andrew and Matthias, he was sent to the country of the man-eaters and was believed to be given to cannibals. Other accounts say he was stoned by Jews in Jerusalem and then beheaded. And then our last one, as if we've had a nice, delightful round trip of... Who got murdered? Murder. Murder. We have Paul. And while he was not an apostle, he eventually became one of the most important evangelists of the early church. He was originally a very zealous and knowledgeable Jewish Pharisee and considered himself in high regard. See Philippians 3, verses 4 to 6, or Galatians 1, 13 to 14. He spent the first half of his life killing Christians until he experienced a vision of Jesus on the road to Damascus and also lost his sight for a few days because of it. 
He became a very outspoken Christian and wrote nearly half the letters in the New Testament. Throughout these letters, Paul said a lot of ballsy things that, for the time, could have gotten him killed, such as insinuating that there is no difference between a Jew or Gentile, but definitely got him persecuted. Uh, Paul eventually coordinated with the disciples later in life, and his devotion to his message eventually landed him in prison, and then later he was beheaded in Rome under Emperor Nero. Take that lesson, kids. Even in the Bible, pray the letter meant don't be a dick. There's no fucking difference. Jew, Gentile, white, black, you're all the fucking same. Yeah. And still being knocked out and then thrown in a river, probably the best way to go out of all of them. If that's the if case. If that's what happened. It's hard to, he got the worst end of the deal, besides maybe the vat of boiling oil. Or the best thing. Well, the, the thing deal. is, that guy survived. Yeah. Supposedly. But that would still suck. Yeah. That, that, that I it, think that so could, f- that could have been an embellishment, but it's also coming from a, one of the more credible sources. So it's kind of, kind of iffy, but. Either knocked out and drowning or hanging myself. That sounds like the best ones out yeah. of all of them. Yeah. The most painless. <laughs> because if you get a decent enough drop going, you could just sever your spine and be dead. Or you could suffocate yourself if you do it wrong and then you're screwed. Yeah. I mean, it still seems like a lot better than getting fucking emaciated. Or crucified. Crucified yeah. Crucifixion's not a fun process, as we no. talked about. Yeah. It's, or upside down. Or getting eaten. Or or X. By Wait. people. Yeah. It's or, overall not a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Or yeah. being knocked out and thrown out of a temple. From the top. Yeah. I mean, if you're stuff. knocked out, you're not going to feel it. Or stoned and then beheaded. They've all had some very delightful... Very old-timey executions. Now, if there are more details, if you were knocked out as you hit the ground, I think that won't be the best. But there's no guarantee you were. Yeah. Because <clears throat> by the time yeah. you hit, you're going to hit terminal velocity and you're fucking dead. Well, it depends on how high the, the uh, temple is. I wouldn't think it'd be that high. I mean, maybe they drop, velocity. Drop him head first. Died, drop him from ten feet. You land right, but you're not going to reach terminal velocity from ten feet. Oh no! But if you land right, I yeah. mean, if they're yeeting, yeah. they're just fucking yeeting them. Yeah, resistance is going to pull you to more of a kind of pencil yeah. shape. But basically, um, to wrap up that section, it it, it kind of points to the fact that you know, like when I say like. People were willing to die for Christianity. It's not like, oh, they just, you know, like they, these are the kinds of deaths that the people died. So people don't just die for something that they believe didn't happen. They, especially well, in the way that died, they did. They died because of their conviction. They that believed, it occurred. they believed that what they claimed happened actually happened. Yeah. Essentially. So, I mean, I think. At least to some degree. Yeah, it tosses the conspiracy theory right out the window. Yeah, at least to some degree, their um, willingness to do that should give it give the resurrection theory a little bit more credibility. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it, it's hard to die for something you don't believe in. Yeah. I mean, look at Jonestown. You, if not sure if you've ever listened to the tapes. I well, no, not the tapes. I don't I've recommend it. Yeah, I would rather not. But you you can obviously tell that a lot of those people are really starting not to believe that bullshit when they're being murdered. Yeah. Or as they're dying from cyanide poisoning. Yeah. Whereas heaven gates are just like, <clears throat> uh, we're going to the aliens. Uh. <laughs> and then they drank a bunch of vodka, took pills, and then suffocated themselves. And well, wore some Nike, some fresh ass Nike decades. Yeah. Well, actually, other people suffocated them, technically. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up our, our section on brutal murder and death, there's one more thing I'd like to discuss, <laughs> and that's the Roman gladiatorial games. Ooh. Ooh. Yay. Yeah, fuck these bitches Showtime, up. Showtime, baby. As if the martyrdom of the early Christian saints weren't enough, Rome often engaged in gladiatorial games, which required Roman soldiers to fight each other, and oftentimes Christians were killed for, quote, entertainment. 
These public executions were designed to invoke fear into Roman citizens who rebelled against the status quo. You could go to the Roman Colosseum and watch these games at nearly any time of day. According to Seneca, a Roman philosopher, quote, the combatants were, per- were excuse me, the combatants have no protective covering. Why have armor? Why bother with skill? All that just delays death. In the morning, men are thrown to the lions and bears. At midday, they are thrown to the spectators themselves. No sooner has a man killed than they shout for him to kill another, or to be killed. In the end, every fighter dies. You may object that the victims committed robbery or were murderers. So what? Even if they deserve to suffer, what's your compulsion to watch their sufferings? End quote. Because you're a sick bastard. Yeah, and that was just, they normalized that kind of activity. And we, we think about, like, how could, like, the Nazi German soldiers do what they did. Well, they were also high on math. And they were, they Not, were given... They but were given there orders. were actual trials and and yeah, the, but a better the Nuremberg trials was be, that it? Yeah, well, but the Nuremberg was against those. But a, a better, better dis- way to look at this in modern eyes. Oh, okay. Think, think about ahead, people ahead. looking at shock videos on the internet. What 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 makes you want to watch someone get shot in the fucking head and watch their whole head deform? What makes you want to? You slowly become desensitized. Yeah. Well, also, I was going to bring up in a similar vein, until we got death houses and prisons in the U.S., you would just, people would go outside and watch a hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Any any time an execution took place. There was a study done. um, I'm forgetting. It's a very famous study. You probably heard of it, and I don't remember the name of it. But basically, um, a... Uh, someone was in a control room and they had questions to ask the person in the next room who actually didn't really exist. It was just uh, a yeah. recording of someone. And they were asked to give them questions and if they get it wrong, they zap them. Yep. And as they get it wrong, they it go up, stronger. They goes up in shock until it gets to a lethal shock. And obviously, the person is, they're progressing the shocks to this other person and they have the the person administering the test in the room with them uh the person giving the shocks is in the room with someone kind of encouraging them to keep doing it um and so when they get to like near the lethal shock um you know they're hearing like the desperate pleas of the other person saying like please stop i like my heart rate is going up like i like i'm not okay um, and with the person in the room just slowly encouraging them, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. An overwhelming majority of people in that test continued and gave them a lethal shock. I want to say it was like 75%. So when people, this was a, a, a groundbreaking study in psychology when when society and pressures and social norms are high on doing something that's absolutely horrible and evil, you were you were capable of doing extremely awful things. Especially yeah. when under the guy when under the stress of your peers as well. Yeah. Or un, even more so under the stress of a power structure. So case and study, that's yeah. what was going on in Rome because that was just the norm. Basic sociology. I mean, they also yeah. did it with babies and clowns, uh, with puppies, rats. Yeah, I mean, go on back to like my sociology class and the discussion we had to have. It was like, yeah, if I was back in. 1860 mm-hmm. oh definitely racism I wouldn't even thought about that probably because it was just the cultural norm mm-hmm. or like going to see a fucking execution it was a time of festivity that's what you did yeah it's fucked up they partied but it's what happened I don't know I, there's still some executions where people would get down in the street fucking have barbecues and shit all right. Well, anyway, let's get back to the gladiatorial games. Um, the persecution of Christians was especially humiliating as they were, quote, sometimes led around the arena in a procession dressed up as priests and priestesses of pagan cults before being stripped naked and thrown to the wild beasts, end quote. These games persisted until the early 5th century. 
I mentioned in the episode, Who Was Jesus?, that when the Great Fire of Rome happened in 64 AD, many blamed Emperor Nero. Obviously, the emperor didn't like these accusations, so he blamed the Christians. According to Tacitus, quote, to suppress the rumor, he falsely charged with the guilt and punished with the most exquisite tortures the persons commonly called Christians, who were hated for their enormities, end quote. These most exquisite tortures consisted of burning Christians to death. So yeah, that's uh, that was what many. That's just a snippet of what uh, a lot of the early Christian followers were facing. Yeah, they, I mean, they were the time. smallest group, so they were a scapegoat. Yeah, well, they were also very much against the status quo. Imagine, yeah, saying women and slaves are equal, like, I don't know, two thousand years ago. Shit. I mean, fuck, imagine saying that shit. To Christ, years ago. to quote unquote Christians, one hundred fifty years ago. Yeah, think think about how fucked up that is. Yeah, but yep. I mean that's like. So they were so basically they were so far ahead of their time in terms of moral progression that was promoted by Christianity, and then also uh, just you know going against the status quo of Judaism and scapegoating. Yeah. Christians just I mean just like the Jews were scapegoated just like uh, <clears throat> the please understand when I say quote unquote witches of the Salem witch trials were scapegoated where they were just fucking murdered for absolutely no reason some of them yeah I mean I, I'm not I'm not too informed on all of that but I, I know they were just like killing everybody basically yeah or like the and McCart- it was like McCarthyism in the Red Scare. Well, the second Red Scare. Oh, she's a witch, she'll float as they pile more rocks on her drowning body. Or the one guy who, I gotta give this dude mad props. They kept putting rocks on him to crush his chest. Mm -hmm. You know what the son bitch says? Can you hurry up already? (laughs) For lack of better words, and this is not a direct quote, add more weight. I'm ready to meet God. Yeah. Or wow. like during the Red Scare, where if you had any ideas different from the standards of capitalistic U.S. and propaganda, like 1950s, 1960s, they you were, were communists. Ki- and they, people were murdered. Yeah. And everyone had, every society has their scapegoat. Yeah. I'm just like now it's uh, Muslims and liberals. And liberals and mainstream media, quote unquote. And it's more so the past four years of propaganda that's been pushed when re- really there's so many other fucked up issues that. Eh. You gotta pick your battles. Yeah. But still. Speaking of picking your battles, let's fast forward to modern history. Uh, Needless to say. Are we going on a crusade yet? No, we're skipping that. Not yet. Sorry, we're just gonna fast forward to where we are now. Damn it, pointless. I gotta, I gotta do more research on the Crusades because I've like heard so many different things and do like, research on the Children's Crusade. That shit is wild. Yeah, there's a lot to go into with those, but I can tell you what I know off the mic. But I'm not informed enough to go on the mic and be like, "This is what happened," because I know history. I don't. I don't know shit. I know like a million things that I've heard, and I have to verify all of it before I want to say it's true anyway um needless to say many people had to suffer and die brutal deaths for christianity to get where it is today whether we realize it or not though western civilization as we know it was built upon the back of christianity which would not have survived the first century had people not been willing to die for it historian and author tom holland not spider-man he's an actual like a different different tom holland uh he believes it was precisely because of christianity that we hold many of the modern secular assumptions that we take for granted in society today for example the father of science sir isaac newton was a christian 
He essentially invented the scientific method because he believed that God had created a world in a graspable manner. <clears throat> okay. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Bailey from the future in, in editing time fact-checking my mistakes from the episode. In the episode, I just said that Sir Isaac Newton was the one that founded the scientific method. Michael and David corrected me immediately following this, saying that it was actually Francis Bacon. Sorry about that. Um, I was wrong about that, but my point still stands because apparently Francis Bacon also was Christian. I had gotten them mixed up. I'm sorry. So that was my bad. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Anyway, back to the episode. The virtue signaling militant strands of atheists who want to make sure the world knows that they're not Christian can actually see their roots in Christian morality. After all, if you don't believe in God, why should you evangelize other people about that? That's something Christians do. Fighting against immorality as if there were an objective right and wrong is a fundamentally Christian assumption. Civil rights and ethical values such as loving your neighbor, treating people equally, and caring for the poor were completely unheard of in the pagan world before Christ. Whether we like it or not, we live in a world with Christian assumptions undergirding everything. Western society is built upon the backs of Christian martyrs. And uh, here's where I kind of take an issue. Uh... The secular world is trying to have their cake and eat it too by keeping what they like about Christianity and reject what makes it unique, the founder who brought these teachings in the first place. It's kind of a knockoff Christ, uh, version of Christianity, and that's why I take issue sometimes with the secular view. Yeah, well, I mean, in the ideas of, like, if it is built upon, like, Christianity, we didn't have really a choice in that. So. No. Even our fundamental morals that we learn from our society. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what that's what he's arguing in his book, which I haven't yeah, read his I book, mean, but in my opinion, like yes, yeah, so it's just the the undergirding assumptions that we have came out of Christianity, essentially, yeah. out of a well, long a good chunk of them. There's yeah. still stuff that like some. I mean, some of it pagan comes... denominations were actually like more progressive in, but mm -hmm. just like with the way to how societies kind of wax and wane some become more progressive and some become less so yeah like that because we sent those heretics over here yeah to america and but i can't i see where he's coming from but also it's just it, it sits wrong when it's like oh well yeah jesus because it's like I didn't have a choice in my morals. This, these are my morals. I know, I don't believe in God, but I have these morals because it's what society has deemed would be right. Yeah, I believe morals are inherently personal to a person. Because yeah, speaking back on that experiment with the clowns I was talking about earlier, they took children and brought them to a and had a clown in there, and it was only after children were taught to beat the clown or to treat yeah. the clown different that they treated it different. I don't think anyone is born morally corrupt in that sense. They are corrupted by society in the area around them. It's like that Disturbed song who taught you how to hate. Basically, it's about... Or the, I think we... I might have talked about this yeah, already. Or the DV episode. scene in uh, Down With The Sickness. Yeah. Which f fucked me up as a kid. Yeah. But, but yeah. I still believe morals are kind of baked in the like get where it's DNA. coming from where it's like you should know where it began at where like modern because we're in america but we originally from a eurocentric view mm -hmm. and while well, europe's christian now yeah. Yeah, some are embracing their pagan roots and more and power to them you can look at a, some morals from tribes and things where it's like hey they can kill us, we can kill them. Let's kind of fucking work this shit out. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's also kind of like goes back to how that was in its context originally. Like, it was pretty revolutionary and against the status quo, which is what got them killed. Yeah. And then that influence lived on throughout history. And yeah, because of Christianity growing as yeah, kind of one to staple. And religions if not see, the staple I think that even adds more to the point of they were willing to become martyrs 
because they were following their true moral identity over alongside their true religious identity of course even though society had corrupted moral identity past that point yeah if that makes any sense yeah yeah so it means to me that's more strongly that they believed versus oh yeah in this religion these are these morals instead of hey these are the rules but these people also morally felt this way inside following that yeah kind of like how in like modern day Russia people are willing to risk their lives to go and protest against corruption mm-hmm all right well anyway um if you're interested in that concept i'll leave a link uh to an interview with tom holland who is interestingly doesn't he uh he's not fully christian he says he's christian and that his assumptions are christians but he he doesn't like call himself like he doesn't believe in like the resurrection and stuff like that stuff that would make him christian he just says according basically because of according to his view everyone's technically christian and, and their his, assumptions his natural bias right um, just like I, I i i get that because a lot of my natural biases are christian based to my a upbringing. lot of everyone's are <laughs> especially over here yeah whether or not uh, culturally christian i i, I kind of like how one guy explained to me as he said he was an agnostic jew culturally he was jewish yeah religiously he was agnostic gotcha yeah Anyway, that's in the sources, and it's called Why Science and Secularism Come from Christianity, or you can read his book, yeah. Dominion. Yeah, and also on the idea of, like, science, like, most religious places, like, had scientific departments for a reason. Mm-hmm. They want to figure out how stuff works. Yeah. And back then, most of the highly educated, like, scribes and whatnot, were working for a church or whatnot. Yeah. So it makes sense that or we're working for government, which was highly influenced by the church. Yeah. So it, yeah, it just it makes sense. Yeah. You got a bunch of smart people; they're going to start wondering how stuff works. Right. Um. Obviously, it has been. Oh boy, we're gonna. This is gonna be. There's gonna be a discussion about this one. Uh, it has been of great debate whether or not America was explicitly founded upon Christian values. Some of the founding fathers were religious, others were more dubious in their beliefs, but no doubt there was a strong Christian influence in America at the time, so I'm sure Christianity had some impact upon the ideals of our nation, such as the Bill of Rights being a very clear reference to the Ten Commandments. But I'll leave it up to you to decide if the founding fathers intended for America to lean towards Christianity. In the beginning, a lot of the founding fathers, when you look at what they claimed, they would very you know kind of blank face freemason and to be a freemason all you have to do is believe in a higher power Mm -hmm. and so and then you look at the a lot of the first colonizers or pilgrims or quakers or and obviously those are offsets of christianity yeah whether or not they're viewed as heretics or what i don't know personally because i haven't done that research Mm -hmm. but when you put a whole bunch of people in eventually they grow and their influence grows yeah yeah it's just the the cultural influence yeah and i mean and like it uh, it was built on a deistic ground but it was also built so that the no one religion should have control because they saw the evil that can come from an ultimate religion just like in other countries especially in the middle east you don't believe- modern day where if you don't believe in this you're dead yeah or the separation of the churches also had a big effect on politics of the era yeah it's kind of the same like ideas behind why we're republic instead of democracy because they didn't trust the common man and also we're a democratic republic yeah it makes with socialist a lot, of, a lot of sense yeah we're, we're, i mean the u.s is a hodgepodge of just grab and go it's a melting pot yeah, yeah it, it melting pot found on, founded on dead people yeah and murder of innocents yeah. yeah wow it's pretty great no, it's not great. I'm being sarcastic. Anytime I'm like, yeah, oh, it's great. <laughs> the U.S. is no, a shit show. I'm joking. I'm being sarcastic. We live here. We also, have. We have. Also, op- thanks for the 
shrug that just everyone we have the opportunity to week. make this a great country we right. have the yeah, chance give us that patriotism yeah sorry go ahead here's here's a speech he's he's inaug- michael's well, inaugural, inaugural i was also address. gonna note on the this this taste of the two-party system but he can go on oh we, we that's have a different the, episode we have an opportunity to make this a great nation because there are great minds of every religion as we found out as as we know from meeting different people a bunch of different races sexes genders preferences cultures and what would make america great is a combination of all those because this is a place founded on separation of church and state this is a place founded on freedoms unequivocal given to man all men are created equal under God, invisible with liberty and justice for all. America. And in that is where what separates us from the England we left, where the church, for the most part, was a great political influencer. Yep. For worse. Obviously, yep. I mean, drug, at like, times, definitely. I, for, for the most part, I would very. Switch, sw- well, I mean, we talked about how they like switch from funded. Cath- well, they fu- they funded you know like science essentially and yeah, but for yeah. a long time like, they also that's funded where they, the murder of millions. Yeah, well, yeah. and I mean, it was like, oh, wh- wh- which are we going to be <laughs> Catholic or Protestant? Catholic or Protestant? Oh, Protestant! I'm a Catholic. I need to go in hiding. Yeah, yeah, and what. Well, and it's all of our differences. All, I mean, it's the reason why we can fucking sit here and have these conversations. Yeah. That's the great part of America. The shitty part is everyone who tries to send us back to the Stone Age with politicizing religion, which is my issue with organized... One of my big issues with organized religion, we'll have which a talk. we'll touch on that later. We'll have a talk in uh, a future episode Yeah, about where Michael can rant about religion or whatnot. And so remember, and I'll, I'll join in. If anybody tries to tell you, make America great again, it both has and will never be great. If that's the rhetoric we use, right? All right. Well, and that's for both sides: Democrat, Republican, conservative, same, liberal. Same side of the coin, honestly. Y'all all can be Nazis. So fuck off. Some days. But back to our conversation at hand after that lovely presidential speech. Yeah. I'm running for office in this is, this is, uh, 12 years. Oh, boy. Run. So that's ha- almost... You have 12 years to get You don't away. count my vote. Yet. That's more than half my <laughs> life. Um, so this is the last thing I have on this section. Um, some Americans used the Bible to justify slavery, while others, such as Abraham Lincoln used it to argue against it and for the people that used it to justify slavery i would refer them to the book of philemon and i don't know if we talked about that on the mic or off the mic i think we talked about on the mic and also quick little aside on that with history both both north and south were guilty of perpetuating slavery yeah that that's a hot topic i had people trying to yell in my history class about that but uh, but I would say more like the uh, Underground Railroad and <clears throat> more kind of outspoken because Lincoln wasn't very outspoken about it, but he saw it as a means to an end. Well, because before Lincoln was elected, he said, quote, I think that if anything can be proved by natural theology, it is that slavery is morally wrong, end quote. Yeah. During his inaugural address, he stated that, quote, intelligence patriotism christianity and a firm reliance on him who has never yet forsaken this favored land are still competent to adjust in the best way all our present difficulties end quote now there is an entire page of his religious quotations like these that i'll leave in the sources below but the bottom line is lincoln seemed to be a very religiously motivated president and it doesn't come off as contrived like it does today, at least to me. I'm glad you see... I mean, he started from nothing. I'm glad you see a lot of modern 
politicians as very fucking contriving just using it to get a vote. Yeah. A lot of politicians just pander to get people to yeah. vote for and them, I mean, just period. Yeah. And also, and, like, going into a little more detail about why I said that is, like, what the kind of ultimatum the South had. Mm-hmm. Because if it was to keep the nation together, he would allow it. Because, like, originally it was like, oh, okay, these new states can't have slavery, but y'all can keep it for time being. Yeah. So it, he couldn't necessarily not been for slavery, but he could would have allowed it for a time at least. But then uh, South decided to succeed, and he's and they're like, nope, we're n- no, you can't have it no more. Just as there are people who are proud that Jesus was murdered, there are people who are proud that the South seceded. Remember that, everybody. Remember that. Yeah. Say that one more time. My brain blanked. As there were were in our people who are proud that Jesus was murdered, uh huh. There are people that are proud that the South succeeded, seceded, and murdered countless people to get that ends to a mean. And you know what? The South lost. Don't let them forget that either. And whether or not you believe the J-Man is the father, is the, the, son. the son, a.k.a. the human form, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Mr. Cum Gutters. <laughs> Please never call God Mr. Cum we're Gutters. We're going to cut that one out. No, we're going to leave it in because gonna, Michael has to deal with the bullshit that he says. One day... Going to leave it in. Someone is going to be like... He's going to be in an rip, interview and they're going to be like, so I hear in... Episode 23 of Facing the Gates podcast you uh, called... Uh, I would love that. <laughs> but right. don't don't let people take a small victory as a victory. Let them remember that they lost in the fucking end. I don't think anyone... Let them, uh, well, I'm not going to say let, anyone. Let but them I think... remember their evils. In a, if they want to live knowing they're an evil son of a bitch, fine. Uh well, Michael getting deep. Yeah. yeah. It's probably the mic. Because, I mean... It's probably his drink hitting him. No. No. I need, like, two more of these. Oh. Uh, but... Well, I'm going to wrap up the episode here in a minute. All right. When, when you're... When you're... You, I mean, you can go on if you want, but, I mean, uh, like... I think for, for lack of better terms, <laughs> if you take pride in an evil fucking thing, don't. Just stop. Just stop it. Get some help. You piece of shit. Gonna make that chicken. was a Michael Jordan reference. Yeah. In stop. case anybody didn't know. Stop. Get some help. You need it. Get, go go McDonald. Get get a three for two McDonald che- make chicken nugget. Straight from homegrown American. Nah, fuck that. I want to make DLT. Anyway, we're going to bring it back. We're getting off topic again, as we do. <clears throat> so, in conclusion, ultimately... Christianity doesn't just point to changing this world one day at a one day at a time. It points to a utopia. Though undeniable progress has been made since Jesus's time, if you really want to know what Christianity points to, read Revelation chapter 20 through 22. I'll leave a link in the sources. It speaks of the eschaton, a time when Jesus returns and defeats evil once and for all. People are judged according to their deeds, and the moral are cast away. A new Jerusalem is established where heaven and earth become one. A day where Jesus himself will, quote, wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away, end quote. This is chapter 21, verse 4. There will be only loving people working together in harmony with the love of God radiating throughout the land. That is the promise of Christianity. And that's all. That's all I got for you. What are your final thoughts, home dogs? I know that kind of was a segue that I just threw that in there, but I know we talked about like, I, I you was know. A, I was about to bring it, like it, the it, holy war. It, what people think of Revelations oh is the God. holy war. Don't even get me fucking started on that shit. I, if there's, if you are a Christian and you are worried about a war at the end of time, 
Why? There's a lot of, uh, as you've seen from that video I showed you, there's a lot of different interpretations of Revelation. Yeah. And that but, but if is you... ten- contingent upon a certain interpretation of it. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to die and go to heaven because you truly are one of God's children and you truly believe. Why? Basically, why stress about worry? it? Who yeah. gives a fuck? Yeah, and I mean, and the idea of a utopia is honestly a very abstract thing from the human mind. Because, I mean, we kind of go away like, oh, yeah, that was bad, but it's okay. It could be worse. Yeah, oh, that was good, but it could be better. The I, balancing out of our feelings. Or I could have the greatest day ever, but I'm still going to hurt. I'm still going to get uncomfortable. There's still going to be negatives along with the greatest day of all time. So think, utopia is even greater than that. Yeah, essentially what I'm trying to get at is, like, obviously over the past few episodes, it's like... Here's why I trust the New Testament. Here's yeah. how the Bible happened. Here's the reasons to believe in the resurrection and all. Like, this is all fundamental. And then, obviously, with this episode, kind of talking about how People the who... early Christians died and how that kind of paved the way for Christianity to kind of change society as it were. Yeah, to be a then. big influence upon yeah. society. But I do... and that's that even even though that's a lot, that's not even what it points to in the end. This is not the end. This is like the new beginning a, a, a part of this the, is an evolution of it i guess if you want to use those filthy atheist language or or it is the washing of the sins it is a baptism into a new day kind of yeah so or just sacrifice the fucking sheep and let's do some sh- shit i need to get some more sheep then <laughs> oh god actually don't sacrifice animals this is a little fucked up yeah yeah but, I, but I do enjoy and I do appreciate that the word moral morals is brought up in that passage because I think a lot of people think that again the cheat code is like oh yeah I believe in Jesus like hmm hmm that that might not be all of it you know you can believe but still be fucking terrible person and if you truly believe are you going to be that terrible of a person there's actually an episode we're going to have in our next series dun, dun, dun. Uh, that makes um, a little bit of a clarification upon the word believe and some of the misconceptions that people have about what that word means. Um, and spoiler warning, it's a difference between there's a difference between believing in and believing that. But we will talk about that in a future episode. Dun, dun, dun. So, yeah. Which I do appreciate that Morbus is brought up in that passage. Yeah. Because I think that's a, that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Because um... I would personally like to think over someone who, I wish you viewers could see my air quotations, believes who's a piece of shit versus someone who might not quite believe but as a great person morally and all that shit. Mm-hmm. I like to believe that God's like, you're a liar. You're misguided. I'd rather have the misguided than the fucking liar. Yeah. It's that gets into, but that, uh, I know that's a little, little tricky for, it gets into murky water of denominational theology and yeah. faith versus works and stuff like that. Which, I've always been more of a works guy myself. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm like C.S. Lewis put it. It's like a pair of scissors. You kind of need both. Yeah. But uh, if the got... way you formulate that and the nuances of it makes giant schisms within Christianity on its own. So it's just like there just might be some saying... some denominations coming out of this. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we 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 might create some new denominations. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> well, we won't be doing it, but. Maybe our listeners will. Please oh, no. don't. I might. Never we mind. don't need more divisions because that's basically all that's happened since the 1500s is more churches. More. I don't like that you painted your walls white. I'm starting a new church. You. I don't you, like that your church is boring. I don't like your hat, so I'm going to wear my own hat. <laughs> new denomination. Oh, I can't kill my wife to divorce her anymore? All right, well, I'll start my own church. With divorces, bitch. That's essentially uh, drunk history right there. <laughs> I remember that. 
You, you should have done that as your drunk history. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, well, anyway, we're, we're rambling on. Um, I've listed many of the sources, um, many sources, in today's episode. Um, so if any of what I've said has interested you, or if you just want to fact check me like Michael did. Uh, oh, like David did, yeah. Well, Francis but, Bacon. It's a collaborative effort. He uh, remembers it. I don't remember shit. <laughs> uh, you can check the link. Uh, the sources in the description um and next episode will be our last in the series uh when addressing the question why christianity over other religions see you then